Okay, good morning and welcome to the 19th meeting in 2014 of the Finance Committee of the Scottish Parliament. Could I please remind everyone present to turn off any mobile phones, uh, tablets or other electronic devices. Uh, our first item of business this morning is to decide whether to take items four and five in private. Are members agreed? Yes. Members have indicated their agreement. Our second item of business today is stage two consideration of the Revenue Scotland and Tax Powers Bill. We are joined by the Cabinet Secretary of Finance, Employment and Sustainable Growth, along with officials from the Scottish Government team, Mr Colin Miller and Mr Greg Walker. Members should note that as officials cannot speak on the record at stage two, all questions should be directed to the Cabinet Secretary. This is a lengthy bill. We have over 300 amendments to dispose of. The Cabinet Secretary is giving evidence to the Economy, Energy and Tourism uh, Committee later this morning, so proceedings on the bill will have to be concluded by around 11.15. I do not intend to set a target, but we shall attempt to make as much progress on the bill as possible today. Members have copies of the Marshall List of Amendments and the groupings, and we will take each amendment on the Marshall List in turn. So I would like to formally welcome the Cabinet Secretary and his officials to uh, the meeting. Welcome, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the question is that sections one and two be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Uh, I call amendment one in the name of the Cabinet Secretary in a group of its own. Cabinet Secretary to move and speak to the amendment. Uh, Kavina, I move amendment one. It, the amendment deals with uh, the issue that it would be inappropriate for serving members of the National Assembly for Wales or the, or the Northern Ireland Assembly members to be eligible for appointment as members of Revenue Scotland. The amendment uh, has the effect of disqualifying them from appointment. Members of the Scottish Parliament, the House of Commons and the House of Lords, amongst others, uh, are amongst others that are already disqualified. Okay, I know members asked to speak. Cabinet Secretary, any further you want to add to that? Nothing else, can Okay, the question is that Amendment 1 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated the agreement. The que question is that Schedule 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have agreed. I call Amendment 2 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 2 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, Kavir, I move Amendment 2 and we'll speak to, together with other amendments in this group. These are all minor technical and drafting amendments. The most significant are perhaps those relating to Section 3, which sets out Revenue Scotland's uh, statutory functions and section 10 which relates to the charter in response to recommendations from stakeholders we've brought forward an amendment to section 3 to make it clear that references to persons uh, to whom revenue scotland must provide information and assistance include taxpayers and their agents the same amendments were made to section 10 to ensure that the charter which revenue scotland must prepare specifically addresses taxpayers and their agents Okay, thank you. Anything further to add, Cabinet Secretary? Yeah. Now, the question is that Amendment 2 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed, and we've uh, now been joined by uh, Jean Urquhart to the committee, and also uh, um, Cabinet Secretary's officials, Ian Young and John St. Clair. I call Amendment 3 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and a group of its own. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, move and speak to Amendment 3. Uh, Kavira, I move Amendment 3. The arrangements we are putting in place for Revenue Scotland include an emphasis on providing opportunities for disputes to be settled quickly without the need for expensive and time-consuming legal proceedings. One of these opportunities is provision for Revenue Scotland and the taxpayer to enter into independent third-party mediation. The purpose of this amendment, which makes specific reference to mediation among Revenue Scotland's statutory functions, is to underline the importance which Parliament attaches to this provision. Okay, the question is that Amendment 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. The question is that Sections 4 to 7 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. Uh, I call Amendment 4 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 2. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 4 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. The question is that Section 8 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 9 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 5 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with Amendments 8 and 9. Cabinet Secretary, move Amendment 5 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 5 and will speak to it together with Amendments 8 and 9. I undertook to lodge these amendments in response to recommendations which the Committee made in its Stage 1 report. The effect is to ensure that the Charter will impose reciprocal obligations on Revenue Scotland and the taxpayer and to require Revenue Scotland to consult on the terms of the first Charter and any subsequent revisions that are made to that Charter. Okay, the question is that Amendment 5 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. 
we are agreed. I call amendments 6, 7, 8 and 9, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move amendments 6 to 9 on block. Uh, moved on block. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. We have no objections. Uh, the question is that amendments 6 to 9 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. The question is that section 10 we agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 11 and 12 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 10 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move amendment 10 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move amendment 10 and will speak to it and other amendments in this group. This group concerns part 3 of the bill concerning information. Section 13 allows Revenue Scotland and persons to whom it delegates any of its functions, that is, registers of Scotland and SEPA, to share information with each other in connection with their statutory functions, including land registration and environmental functions. But Section 15 also imposes a duty on officials exercising tax functions to maintain the confidentiality of taxpayer information and provides that the wrongful disclosure of protected taxpayer information will be a criminal offence. This group of amendments clarifies the detail of these arrangements and provide additional safeguards by modifying the legislation which governs both registers of Scotland and SEPA to ensure that protected taxpayer information can only be disclosed in appropriate and given circumstances. I believe that with the addition of these amendments, part three strikes the right balance between allowing information to be shared between the relevant agencies for the proper exercise of their functions and providing proper protection for the confidentiality, confidentiality of taxpayer information. I move Amendment 10. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 10 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. I call Amendments 11 to 15, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move Amendments 11 to 15 on block. Does any member object to a single question being put on Amendments 11 to 15? No. We have no objections. Uh, the question is that uh, amendments 11 to 15 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 13 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments to 16 to 19, all in the name of Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Uh, move, can we? Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. We have no objections. The question is that amendments 16 to 19 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 14 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 20 to 24, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. They moved on block. Yeah. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. Uh, no member objects. The question is that amendments 20 to 24 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 15 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are in agreement. I call amendment 25 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 10. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, can we? The question is that amendment 25 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 16 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 26 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debated with amendment 10. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, can we? The question is that amendment 26 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 27 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debated with uh, amendment 10. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, can we? The question is that amendment 27 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The, uh, we are agreed. The question is that sections 17 to 22 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 28 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move amendment 28 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, Convener, I move amendment 28 and we'll speak to it together with the rest of the amendments in this group. These amendments broadly align the provisions relating to appointments to the Scottish Tax Tribunals with the corresponding provisions in the Tribunal Scotland Act 2014, which Parliament has, has recently endorsed. It would be inappropriate for serving members of the National Assembly for Wales or the Northern Ireland Assembly to be eligible for appointment as members of tax tribunals, and Amendment 35 therefore has the effect of disqualifying them from appointment as a member of the tax tribunals. The question is that Amendment 20 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 23 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. I call Amendment 29 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debate with Amendment 2. Cabinet Secretary move formally. It moves, Premier. The question is that Amendment 29 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 24 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 30 to, 30, 30 to 51, sorry, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block.
It moved on block. Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. Uh, no one objects. Therefore, the question is that amendments 30 to 51 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated their agreement. The question is that Schedule 2 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 25 and 26 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 52 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 52 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 52 and will speak to, together with the other amendments in the group. As with the previous group, these amendments broadly align the procedures and administration of the tax tribunals implicit in this legislation with the corresponding provisions in the Tribunal Scotland Act 2014. In particular, I would like to draw the Committee's attention to Amendments 53 and 54, which address concerns raised by the Committee in their Stage 1 report. These amendments provide that the size of the panel hearing an appeal in the Upper Tribunal can be augmented at the discretion of the President of the Tax Tribunals. Amendments 70 and 278 provide that Scottish Ministers may by regulation provide for offences and penalties in relation to the proceedings of the tax tribunals. This power is aligned to the corresponding power available to Scottish Ministers under the Tribunal Scotland Act 2014. Okay, the uh, question is Amendment 52 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is at Section 27 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 53 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Are we debated with Amendment 52? Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 53 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 54 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Are we debated with Amendment 52? Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 54 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 28 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 55 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Are we debated with Amendment 52? Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, convener. The question is that Amendment 55 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 30 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 56 name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, convener. The question is that Amendment 56 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 57 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, convener. Uh, the question is, Amendment 57 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 58 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary move 58 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, Convener, I move Amendment 58 and we'll speak to it together with the other amendments in the group. These amendments provide for a different test to apply for the procedure for permitting an onward appeal from the Upper Tribunal, depending on whether the, the original appeal was heard in the Upper Tribunal at first instance or not. What is known as the second appeals test will apply in the same fashion that the Parliament has endorsed in passing the Tribunal Scotland Act 2014. If an appeal is heard in the upper tribunal at first instance, then an appeal to the Court of Session on a point of law is permitted if the upper tribunal or the Court of Session agree. If an appeal heard in the upper tribunal has already been heard in the first tier tribunal, then if the upper tribunal or the Court of Session agree an onward appeal is permissible, um, if the appeal would raise an important point of principle or practice, or there is another compelling reason to allow the appeal. Amendments 58, 60 and 262 provide that if the tribunal refuses to allow a late appeal, there is no onward right of appeal. Amendment 264 provides that a settlement agreement will be treated as a decision of the tribunal, but not in respect of a right of onward appeal. Okay, no members have indicated uh, that they wish to speak. So the question is that Amendment 58 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 31 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 32 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Uh, I call Amendment 59 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 58. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 59 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Call Amendment 60 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 58. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 33 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 34 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 61 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 58. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. 
The question is, Amendment 61 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 62 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 58. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. The question is, Amendment 62 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, members have indicated their agreement. The question is, that Section 35 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is, that Sections 36 to 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 63 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 60, uh, sorry, 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. The question is, that Amendment 63 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 41 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 42 and 43 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated the agreement. I call amendment 64 to 69, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move amendment 64 to 69 on block. It moved on block, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put on amendment 64 to 69? No. Uh, there are no objections. The question, therefore, is that Amendment 64 to 69 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 44 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 45 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 70 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Ready to debate with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 70 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 309. 71, 72 and 73, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. Uh, no member objects. The question, therefore, is amendments 309, 71, 72 and 73 agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have agreed. The, the question is that section 46 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 47 and 48 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 74 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debated with amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. The question is that amendment 74 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 49 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 75 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is Amendment 75 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 76 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is Amendment 76 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is Section 50 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 77 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 77 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 51 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 78 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 78 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 52 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 53 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 79 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I debate with Amendment 52. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It uh, moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 79 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 54 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 55 and 56 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 80 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 80 and to speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, Convener, I move Amendment 80 and uh, we'll speak to it and other amendments in this group. The bill as introduced established three separate categories of authorised officer, designated officer and designated investigation officer who were each able to exercise some of the powers of Revenue Scotland. During stage one, this was criticised by a number of stakeholders as being unnecessarily complicated, and I accept that criticism. The purpose of this group of amendments is therefore to replace the three different types of Revenue Scotland officer with a single category of designated officer for the purpose of exercising relevant powers. This will enable Revenue Scotland to ensure that officers who exercise particular powers are sufficiently senior or specialist um, without unnecessarily complicating arrangements. Okay, the question is that Amendment 80 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 57 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 58 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 81 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with Amendments 82 and 83. Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 81 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, Kavira, I move Amendment 81 and we'll speak to it and other amendments in this group. 
These amendments relate to the general anti-avoidance rule in Part 5 of the Bill. I have made it clear that we intend to take the toughest possible approach to tax avoidance, and I am delighted that the Committee supported that approach in its Stage 1 report. The Committee recommended that we should further strengthen Condition B of the general anti-avoidance rule, and this position was also supported by the Scottish Trade Union Congress and uh, Unison, and these amendments are designed to do exactly that. First of all, Amendments 81 and 82 provide that Condition B will be satisfied if a tax avoidance arrangement lacks either economic or commercial substance, not just commercial substance. And second, Amendment 83 adds a further factor which might indicate that an arrangement lacks economic or commercial substance, which is where it results in a tax advantage that is not reflected in the business ris risks undertaken by the taxpayer. These amendments further reinforce the very robust approach which we intend to take to any form of artificial tax avoidance. I move Amendment 81. Thank you. Malcolm. Um, thank the Cabinet Secretary for responding uh, to the Committee's recommendation at, uh, in this as in other matters. But the Committee also recommended, uh, I think in paragraph 38 of its report, that, pers uh, that reasonable business conduct be extended to cover reasonable personal conduct. And the example cited by the Committee in its report uh, was the matter of a personal gift which has no commercial substance and would not normally be employed in reasonable business conduct. So I just wondered why the Cabinet Secretary hadn't taken on board that particular aspect of the Committee's recommendation. We, our, our, our view would be that the, um, the definition of the amendments as um, by adding in the economic substance as well as commercial substance would address the issue that the committee has raised in its report. Um, we consider that those um, definitions are sufficiently broad in scope to capture the scenario uh, and issues that are raised by Mr Chisholm. Um, I'm certainly happy to um, reflect further on that point, convener, in the light of the point that Mr Chisholm has made um, to ensure, you know, to satisfy myself that um, the aspirations that we've set out in the bill of establishing um, uh, you know, a very high level of intolerance of tax avoidance are actually satisfied by the provisions that we put on the face of the bill. And obviously, if there is a necessity to bring forward further provisions at stage three, then I will be, I will consider doing that. Well, you want to add to? Okay, Cabinet Secretary, would you like to wind up? Or you have to go yeah, on I have to... no further comments to add. Okay, yeah. thank you. The question is that Amendment 81 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated their agreement. I call Amendment 82 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I will debate with Amendment 81. Cabinet Secretary, move formally. It moves, Convener. The question is that Amendment 82 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. I call Amendment 83 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. already debated with Amendment 81. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally. It moves, Convener. The question is that Amendment 83 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. The question is that Section 59 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 84 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary, to move Amendment 84 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 84 and will speak to it and other amendments in this group. This group of amendments makes further provision in respect of counteraction taken under the General Anti Avoidance Rule. In particular, it provides that adjustments which Revenue Scotland makes in order to counter counteract tax advantages under the GAR are subject to the same administrative processes as are set out elsewhere in the Bill, for example, in relation to amending and correcting returns, the making of assessments and determinations by Revenue Scotland and by time limits. Amendment 93 provides that the taxpayer must pay any outstanding tax, penalty or interest within a period of 30 days after a final notice of counteraction is issued under the General Anti-Avoidance Rule. Okay, thank you. The question is, Amendment 84 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 85 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 84. Cabinet Secretary, move formally. Uh, move, Convener. Uh, the question is, that Amendment 85 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 86 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 84. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally. Move, Convener. 
The question is that Amendment 86 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 61 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 62 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 87 to 90, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move the amendments on block. It moved on block, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. No member objects. The question, therefore, is that members 87 to 90 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 63 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 91 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 80. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that amendment 91 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 92 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 84. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 92 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 64 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 93 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 84. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 93 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 94 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 80. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 94 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 95 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 80. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 95 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is that we are agreed. The question is that Section 65 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that 60, Section 66 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 96 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with Amendment 97. Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 96 and speak to both amendments in the group. Kabir, I move Amendment 96. During the committee's evidence sessions at Stage 1, the Law Society of Scotland, amongst others, questioned the need for Section 68 as currently drafted. In particular, they did not feel it was appropriate to have a section on taxpayer duties when there was no corresponding section on Revenue Scotland duties. While Section 68 was only intended as an index rather than to impose duties, I accept that this caused some concern, and I therefore propose to remove Section 68. Okay, thank you. The question is that Amendment 96 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 67 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 97 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debated with Amendment 96. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 97 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Um, I call Amendment 98 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary move Amendment 98 and speak to all amendments in the group. I move Amendment 98 and will speak to it first together with Amendments 99 to 104 and 301. Amendment 99 makes further provision about a person's duty to keep and preserve records where they are liable to be registered for tax. It specifies what type of records must be kept including records relating to material on a landfill site or part of a landfill site. Amendment 101 sets out the period for which such records must be kept and preserved. Amendment 104 addresses a recommendation of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. It amends Section 70 to introduce a power for Scottish Ministers to make regulations subject to negative procedure, prescribing any conditions or exceptions to the form <coughs> and means by which records may be preserved. Amendment 301 repeals two sections of the Landfill Tax Scotland Act 2014 that are no longer required as a result of these amendments. The other amendments are minor and consequential. Um, I'll now speak, Convener, to Amendment 105, together with Amendments 106 to 110, 128 to 129 and 310. At stage 1, I undertook to, to table a number of penalties amendments in response to recommendations which both the Finance Committee and the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee made in their Stage 1 reports, and also in relation to views expressed by stakeholders. These amendments relate to the penalties in Section 71 and Paragraph 5 of Schedule 3 of the Bill for failing to keep and preserve records. They specify the assessment and enforcement arrangements for these two penalties, as well as providing a power for Revenue Scotland to waive the penalty if it is satisfied that there is a reasonable excuse on behalf of the person liable to the penalty. The amendments also introduced two regulation-making powers for Scottish Ministers to make further provision about these two penalties. These regulations will be subject to the affirmative procedure. Okay, thank you. The question is that Amendment 98 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. 
Uh, I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move amendments 90-90-103 on block. Uh, moved on block, Continue. Does any member object to a single question being put? No. No member objects. The question, therefore, is that amendments 90-90-103 are agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 69 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 104 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 98. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. Question is that Amendment 104 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 70 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 105 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 98. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Yeah, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 105 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 71 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 106 to 111 all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It move, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. There are no objections. The question is that amendments 106 to 111 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 72 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 112 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, grouped with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary, move amendment 112 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move amendment 112 and will speak to it together with the rest of the amendments in the group. Amendment 112 removes the power for Scottish Ministers by regulations to define when a tax return must be made. Uh, provision defining when tax returns have to be made is contained in the two tax-specific Acts. It is therefore unnecessary to have the same power in this Bill. Amendments 114, 116 and 119 provide that where a designated Officer of Revenue Scotland has amended a tax return under Section 78 or 84, the taxpayer cannot subsequently amend the return under section 74. In those circumstances, the taxpayer's recourse would be to seek a review or appeal or, or appeal the decision. Amendment 115 amends section 75 to reduce the time within which Revenue Scotland may correct an obvious error or omission in a tax return from three years to 12 months. Given that the section only deals with obvious errors and omissions, I took the view that 12 months was probably sufficient to allow Revenue Scotland to do so. Yes, thank you. The question is that Amendment 112 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 113 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 112. Cabinet Secretary, move formally. I move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 113 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 73 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 114 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with, the, with Amendment 112. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally. It move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 114 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 74 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 115 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 112. Cabinet Secretary, to move formally. It move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 115 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 75 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 76 and 77 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 116 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. We debate with Amendment 112. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 116 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 117 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 117 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 117 and we'll speak to it together with the other amendments in the group. These amendments provide further detail about when additional tax due as a result of a Revenue Scotland amendment, determination or assessment must be paid. Amendment 242 provides that interest is payable on any outstanding amount of tax from the relevant date until it is paid. The relevant date will be, will be a date set by the Scottish Ministers in regulations. Amendment 243 provides that Revenue Scotland will provide a receipt for any amount of tax paid in all circumstances, and not only if the taxpayer uh, requests request one. Okay, uh, thank you. I call Amendment 118 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with other amendments as shown in the grouping. Okay. Apologies, appears to be an, um, an omission from my. Uh, yes, the question is that Amendment 117 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Okay, uh, the, uh, we are agreed. The question is that Section 78 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 79 to 83 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Okay, glad we sorted that out. Okay, sorry, moving on. I call Amendment 118 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary, move Amendment 118 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, Convener, I move Amendment 118 and we'll speak to it together with the other amendments in the group. These amendments will provide increased certainty for the taxpayer, 
where Revenue Scotland have opened an inquiry and for whatever reason, reason has not issued a closure notice, the taxpayer will be able to treat the inquiry as closed three years after the filing date or the date the return in question was made. Amendments 255 and 260 make consequential changes as a result. Okay, the question is that Amendment 118 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. <coughs> I call Amendments 119 to 121 all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Uh, moved on block, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. We have no objections. Therefore, the question is that Amendments 119 to 121 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is that Amendment... <coughs> um, I see it's... I know. The question is that section 84 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Excuse me. Hold on, maybe you jumped ahead there. You jumped right ahead. Excuse me a second, folks. Is this is a way I think you've got it wrong and I've got it right here. Is this? Let's go with this. Look. Look. I just went. I just went. From one minute to another. Just spend a wee minute here, actually, because there's a kind of a anomaly between what I have in front of me and what my uh, clerk has. Okay, folks, I shall reconvene uh, the session. We're back on track. The question is that section 85 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 112 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. 122 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 117. Cabinet Secretary, move formally. Move, convener. Uh, the question is that Amendment 122 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 86 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 687 to 95 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 123 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 117. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, convener. The question is that Amendment 123 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 124 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 117. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, convener. The question is that Amendment 124 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. The question is that section 96 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 97 and 98 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 125 to 127, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It move, can we? Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. There are no objections. Therefore, the question is that amendments 125 to 127 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 99 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 100 to 105 be agreed to. Are we agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. I call amendments 128 to 130 on the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It move, convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. No member objects. Therefore, the question is that amendments 128 to 130 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is that Schedule 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 106 to 110 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 131 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 80, Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, convener. The question is that Amendment 131 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 112 to 116 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 132 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move <coughs> Amendment 132 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 132 and I will speak to it along with other amendments in this group. These make further important provisions about the rules and procedures regarding information notices. Amongst other things, 
they will require that a designated officer must always seek and obtain the, the approval of the tribunal before an information notice under section 119 or 122 can be given. In keeping with the move to a single designated officer classification, the amendments remove all references to a designated investigation officer. The references to a transaction and buyer in section 121 uh, uh, 2 of the bill may inadvertently create an assumption that the provision only applies to land and buildings transaction tax. Amendment uh, 142 therefore makes it clearer that this section applies to a wider range of circumstances and therefore to both devolved taxes. The current wording in section 1213A does not cater for partnerships which are not registered, such as common law partnerships. Amendment 143 corrects this by allowing a third party notice to state a name by which a partnership is uh, a name by which the partnership is known. Other amendments in this group make further important provisions about inspections of business premises and the investigatory powers available to a designated officer. The amendments make it clear that a designated officer can carry out an inspection of business premises without advance notice only if there are reasonable grounds for believing that giving notice would seriously prejudice the assessment or collection of tax. Where advance notice is given, this must be given in writing. The amendments also give additional powers to an officer carrying out such an inspection so that Revenue Scotland can effectively discharge its investigatory functions in relation to Scottish landfill tax. Amongst other things, an officer will be able to bring other persons to the inspection. Such persons will be able to take and use any equipment or materials required for the purposes of the inspection, such as heavy machinery. Finally, Section 1423B of the Bill currently places a reasonableness condition on the ability of a person to request a copy of a document which they produce to a Revenue Scotland designated officer and which is then subsequently removed by that officer. I do not think that such a condition is, is either necessary or, or fair. A person should always be entitled to request a copy of a document removed in such circumstances, and Amendment 159 makes this clear. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The question is that Amendment 132 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 117 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Call Amendment 133 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already made with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary, move formally. Uh, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 133 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, the question is that Section 118 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. I call Amendments 134 to 140, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved, Convener. Uh, does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. Uh, no member objects. Therefore, the question is that Amendments 134 to 140 uh, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 119 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 141 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. Uh, the question is that Amendment 141 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 120 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendments 142 to 144, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block. Yeah. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. No member objects. Therefore, the question is that amendments 142 to 144 agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is that section 121 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments, amendment 145 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I'll already debate with amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that amendment 145 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 146 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I'll already debate with amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, the question is that Amendment 146 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 122 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 147 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary move formally. Move, the question is that Amendment 147 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 123 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 124 to 126 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 148 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 132, Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 148 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 127 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 128 to 134 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 149 to 153 on the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block, Convener. 
Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No, no member objects. Therefore, the question is that amendments 149 to 153 agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 135 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Call amendment 154 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already made by the amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to um, move forward. It move forward. The question right. is that amendment 154 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 136 and 137 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 155 to 157 on the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block. Convenient. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. Nope. No member has objected. The question, therefore, is that amendments 155 to 157 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is that section 138 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is that section 139 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 158 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Yeah, move forward, the yeah. question is that amendment 158 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 140 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 141 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 159 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Yeah, move formally, yeah. The question is that amendment 159 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 142 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 143 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. I call amendment 160, name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with amendment 132, Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that amendment 160 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I, I call amendment 161, the name of the Cabinet Secretary, already debated with uh, amendment 132, Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. The question is that amendment 161 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated the agreement. The question is that section 144 be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. I call amendment 162, name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 162 and speak to all other amendments in the group. Kavir, I move Amendment 162 and will speak to it and the other amendments in this group. This group of amendments makes some procedural changes to the circumstances in which decisions taken by Revenue Scotland are to be appealable. For example, Amendment 248 provides that a decision of Revenue Scotland under Section 61 to make adjustments to counteract, counteract a tax advantage is an appealable decision. Amendments 249 and 250 ensure that any decision in relation to a penalty is appealable, including the amount of the penalty and whether to suspend it. Amendments 162, 246, 282 and 287 provide affirmative order-making powers for Scottish Ministers to modify the list of non-appealable decisions in section 144 and to specify additional circumstances in which decisions in relation to notices, give, notices given under section 193 may be appealable. Okay, the question is that Amendment 162 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 145 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 163 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Yeah, move formally. Yeah. The question is that Amendment 163 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, we are. I call Amendment 164 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 164 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 146 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 165 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 165 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 147 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 166 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 2. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 166 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 148 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. I call Amendment 167 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Ready debate with Amendment 2. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. Uh, the question is that Amendment 167 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 149 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated the agreement. I call Amendment 168 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 168 and speak to all other amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 168 and will speak to it together with the other amendments in this group. As I have mentioned already in relation to Group 13, during Stage 1 I undertook to bring the detail of the penalties regime onto the face of the Bill. This group of amendments relates to the penalties in section one, Sections 150 and 151 of the Bill for failing to make a tax return or to pay tax on time. They specify the circumstances under which either of the penalties are payable, the penalty amounts, and also tidy up the wording in sections 152 to 159. The amendments also remove the two regulation-making powers in section 1502 and 1512 and replace them with a single regula 
regulation-making power for Scottish ministers to make further provision about penalties in Chapter 2 of Part 8 of the Bill. Any such regulations will be subject to affirmative procedure. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gavin, to be followed by John. Uh, Commissioner, thank you. Um, I should start by saying I, I welcome the government's approach to penalties and the change to put them on the face of the bill. The committee has had a representation in relation to amendments 179 to 186, um, questioning the reason for making the penalty payable uh, if the tax is outstanding the day after the due date. Uh, the representation made to us suggests that that is perhaps a little harsh on the taxpayer in some occasions, uh, particularly if, th if there is a kind of genuine oversight or error, or indeed if there is um, an error uh, or bureaucracy by Revenue Scotland or those collecting the tax. So I just wonder if the government, uh, in, in winding up, uh, can give its uh, thinking behind going for the day after and whether it is potentially flexible uh, on that issue, uh, if we'd be willing to reflect upon it as we come to stage three. Um, yes, on a separate point, I mean, I think the committee does welcome the increased consi consistency uh, in having penalties on the face of the bill. Uh, I just wonder how inflation will be dealt with, because, I mean, at the moment it's fairly low, but, I mean, £100 over time becomes worth less and less. And I think especially some of the older Westminster legislation, we've seen the case where a penalty becomes almost meaningless. So I just wonder if the Cabinet Secretary could clarify if the penalties are on the face of the bill, how they would be reviewed uh, over time. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary, to wind up. Um, yeah, let me deal with Mr Mason's point. First of all, there is a regulation, uh, a power to uh, apply inflation by regulation, so the discretion is in the bill to essentially, uh, there would have to be action taken. There's not an automatic um, uh, application of inflation, but there would be a utilisation of a power to, um, uh, to uh, uh, apply an inflation adjustment as appropriate. Um, on the point that um, uh, Mr Brown has raised, um, the, the government has taken the view that um, we should uh, establish a regime which uh, errs very heavily on um, the proper reporting uh, and disclosure of um, uh, liability for tax purposes and prompt payment as a consequence. And I think as a general principle, that is, um, uh, that is a, 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 a good and sound provision, and it's reflected in the regime that we have set out in, on the face of the bill in response to the committee's representations. So I think it does, um, a, and Revenue Scotland also it does have discretion within the bill to allocate more time in exceptional circumstances if it considers that to be necessary. So I think the, the correct balance is struck within the bill on um, the emphasis on prompt payment, but leaving some discretion in exceptional circumstances. And I think generally, I would, uh, I would think um, Parliament would be of a view that um, we should err on the side of encouraging prompt payment but leaving some room for discretion if it is absolutely required. So my, my sense is that we've struck the right balance, but given, you know, if the committee um, were to support the amendments that I've made here, I would certainly reflect further on the point that if Mr Brown wishes to make further representations to me, I'll happily consider those. And if there is, if I, if, if I, if I, if I don't believe we have constructed the correct balance, I'd be happy to bring forward amendments at stage three to to alter that balance if I felt that um, that was required. Okay. Uh, the question is that Amendment 168 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 169 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debate with Amendment 168. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move can be agreed. The question is that Amendment 169 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 170 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debated with Amendment 168. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 170 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 150 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 171 to 181, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Uh, move, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. 
and no member uh, has objected. The question, therefore, is amendments 171281 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 151 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 182 to 189, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block, yeah. Does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. Uh, the question is, uh, no member has objected, therefore the question is that amendments 182 to 189 are agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated their agreement. The question is that section 152 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 190 to 192 on the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Moved on block, convener. Does any member object to a single question we put on these amendments? No. Uh, no member has indicated their objection, therefore the question is that amendments 190 to 192 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 153 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 193, name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 168, Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, convener. The question is that amendment 193 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 154 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 194, name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 168. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Yeah, move, convener. The question is that amendment 194 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 155 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 195, the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 168. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, convener. The question is that amendment 195 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 156 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 196 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 168. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, convener. The question is that amendment 196 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated the agreement. I call amendment 197 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 168. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, convener. The question is that amendment 197 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 157 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 198 to 202, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Move, convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. As no member has objected, the question is that amendments 198 to 202 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 158 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 203 to 205, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block, can be. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. No member objects, therefore the question is that amendments 203 to 205 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. The question is that section 159 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 206 name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with amendment 168. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, convener. The question is that amendment 206 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 207 the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move 207 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 207 and we'll speak to it together with the other amendments in this group, which are part of the penalties amendments and are to, to bring forward at Stage 1. These amendments relate to the penalties in Sections 160, 162 and 163 for submitting inaccurate documents to Revenue Scotland or for failing to take reasonable steps to notify Revenue Scotland about a Revenue Scotland underestimate of tax. The amendments specify the circumstances under which these penalties are payable and also the penalty amounts and how they are calculated. The amendments also remove the three regulation-making powers in sections 1607, 1624 and 1633 of the Bill and replace them with a single regulation-making power for Scottish Ministers to make further provision about penalties in Chapter 3 of Part 8 of the Bill, subject, of course, to the affirmative procedure. <laughs> Okay, the question is that Amendment 207 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 208 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 207. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Yeah, move formally. The question is that Amendment 208 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 209 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 207. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Yeah, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 209 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, we are agreed. The question is that section 160 be agreed to. Are we, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 210 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Ready to debate with amendment 207. Cabinet Secretary to move, form, to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. The question is that amendment 210 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 161 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 211 to 213. All in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block.
Uh, moved on block. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. Nope. No member has indicated an objection. Therefore, um, the question is that amendments 211 to 213 agree to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. The question is that section 162 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 214 to 216 all name it in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Yes. Moved on block. Yeah. Thank you. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. No member has indicated their objection. The question, therefore, is that amendments 214 to 216 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 163 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 217 to 221, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moves on block, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. Uh, uh, no member has objected, therefore the question is that amendments 217 to 221 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 164 be agreed to. Are we agreed? Yes. Uh, we are in agreement. I call amendment 222 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary to debate with amendment 207. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Um, move, The question is that amendment 222 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 165 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call amendments 223 to 225, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Yeah, moved on block, Convener. Does any member object to a single question we put in these amendments? No. No member objects. Therefore, the question is that amendments 223 to 225 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 166 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 226 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Or a debate with amendment 207. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moves, Convener. The question is that Amendment 226 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 227 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moves, Convener. The question is that Amendment 227 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 167 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members agreed. The question is that Sections 168 and 169 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 228 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Cabinet Secretary to move to 228 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 228 and will speak to it together with the other amendments in this group. These amendments remove the two order-making powers in sections 170 and 196 and replace them with a single regulation-making power for Scottish Ministers to make further provision about penalties in Chapter 4 of Part 8 of the Bill, subject to the affirmative procedure. <coughs> Uh, thank you. The question is that Amendment 228 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 171 to 173 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The, uh, call Amendment 229 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 132. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 229 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 174 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 175 and 176 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Uh, call Amendment 230 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 228. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. Question is that Amendment 230 will be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 177 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Sections 178 to 180 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 231 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I debate with Amendment 228. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 231 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 232 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move Amendment 232 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 232 and will speak to it together with the other amendments in this group. These amendments relate to the penalty in Section 181 of the Bill for failing to comply with the requirement imposed by or under Sections 22 or 23 of the Landfill Tax Scotland Act 2014. These provisions require the taxpayer or prospective taxpayer to notify Revenue Scotland when they form the intention to engage in or desist from engaging in taxable activities. The amendments specify the circumstances under which the penalty is payable, the penalty amounts and how they are calculated, the enforcement and assessment arrangements and the discretionary powers that Revenue Scotland will have in relation to this penalty. The amendments also remove the regulation making power which is specific to section 1812 of the bill and replace it with a broader power for Scottish ministers to make further provision about penalties in chapter 5 of part 8 of the bill subject to the affirmative procedure. 
Thank you. The question is that Amendment 232 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 233 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I'll debate with Amendment 232. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 233 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 234 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I'll debate with Amendment 232. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. Uh, the question is that Amendment 234 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is that Section 181 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendments 235 to 242. All in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block. Yeah. Does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. No member uh, wishes to object. Therefore, the question is that amendments 235 to 242 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 182 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 183 to 185 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 234 in the name of, uh, sorry, 243 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debate with amendment 117. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. Thank you. The question is that amendment 243 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members agreed. The question is that section 186 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Mem members agreed. Question is that section 187 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 244 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with amendments 245 and 300. I uh, invite the Cabinet Secretary to move amendment 244 and speak to all amendments in the group. Convener, I move amendment 244 and we'll speak to it together with amendments 245 and 300. Section 188 of the bill makes provision for a designated officer to issue a certificate of debt that a sum payable to Revenue Scotland has not been paid. Amendments 244 and 245 make further provision for designated officers to issue certificates that no return or notice has been made. The importance of these certificates is that Revenue Scotland, on the strength of them, can obtain, <coughs> can obtain summary warrants under Section 190 of the Bill, which are immediately enforceable against taxpayers who owe money to Revenue Scotland. Similar provision for these two types of certificates is already made in Section 28 of the Landfill Tax Scotland Act 2014. Amendment 300 will therefore repeal this section in consequence of Amendments 244 and 245. Uh, thank you. The question is that Amendment 244 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 245 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 244. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. I move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 245 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 188 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 189 to 194 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call amendment 246 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 162. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. The question is that amendment 246 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 195 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 247 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with amendment 228. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 247 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is we are agreed, sorry. Yes. The question is that Section 197 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendments 248 to 251, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. No member has indicated an objection, therefore the question is that amendments 248 to 251 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is that section 198 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 252 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with other amendments as shown in the groupings. Uh, I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move amendment 252 and speak to all other amendments in the group. Convener, I move amendment 252. This group of amendments relates to review and appeals and is entirely procedural. The intention is that any review should take place before an appeal to the Tribunal. These amendments therefore provide that a taxpayer cannot ask Revenue Scotland to review a decision if he or she has already lodged a notice of appeal to the Tribunal against it. Likewise, the taxpayer may not lodge an appeal if he or she has already asked Revenue Scotland to carry out a review. And if the taxpayer has entered into a settlement arrangement with Revenue Scotland, then he or she cannot either ask for a review or lodge an appeal against the decision. Amendments 259 and 261 simply provide that an appellant must give a notice of appeal direct to the Tribunal and not to Revenue Scotland. Yeah, thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 252 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated the agreement. I call Amendment 253 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 252. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Convener. 
question is at Amendment 253 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is at Section 199 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendments 254 to 256. All in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block. Yeah. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. Nope. No member has indicated their objection. Therefore, the question is at Amendments 254 to 256 agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed to. We agreed. The question is at section 200 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We agreed. The question is at sections 201 to 205 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members have indicated the agreement. I call amendment 257 in the name of the cabinet secretary. Already debated with amendment 252. Cabinet secretary to move formally. Move, convener. Uh, the question is at amendment 257 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call amendment 258 in the name of the cabinet secretary. Already debated with amendment 252. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, convener. The question is at Amendment 258 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is at Section 206 be agreed to. Are we agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 259 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Ready to be with Amendment 252. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, convener. The question is at Amendment 259 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 260 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Ready to be with Amendment 118. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, convener. The question is at Amendment 260 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. The question is at Section 207 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 261 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 252. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It moved, convener. The question is at Amendment 261 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Members are agreed. I call Amendment 262 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 58. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Moved, convener. The question is at Amendment 262 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is at Section 208 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is at Section 209 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Uh, call Amendment 263 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with, uh, with Amendment 289. Cabinet Secretary to move two six, uh, Amendment 263 and speak to both amendments in the group. Good evening. I move Amendment 263. Uh, section 210 provides that any tax penalty or interest is payable in advance of a review or an appeal but allows ministers to bring forward regulations providing for the postponement of tax penalties or interest pending a review or appeal. However, in relation to both land and buildings, transaction tax and landfill tax, I believe it is right that any tax which is due and any associated penalties and interest should be paid immediately. It will not therefore be necessary to bring forward regulations providing for postponement, although Revenue Scotland will of course be able to exercise its own discretion to do so on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. Malcolm. Um, I was just a bit surprised. It seemed, um, it seemed rather harsh not to have any provision for uh, appeals. I mean, obviously, there could be cases where it's being used in the, as an excuse to postpone payment, but equally, um, there may well be that the appeal has merit or the taxpayer may even be suffering hardship. And I, I was interested in your comments about um, landfill tax and land building transaction tax, but surely this bill uh, is supposed to refer to any future taxes uh, as well and there is no it's not specific those two taxes are not specifically mentioned with in in section 210 so it just seems uh, rather harsh that there should be no provision uh, you know for postponement with a review or appeal because it may well be that revenue scotland uh, sometimes makes mistakes okay having to be followed by jamie Convener, thank you um Amendment 263 removes subsection 2 and subsection 3 uh, of section 210 of the bill. Um, subsection 2 at the moment, as it stands, gives Scottish ministers the power to make regulations for the provision of the postponement of any tax penalty or interest pending review or appeal. It doesn't force them to do so. It uh, gives them the option, should they choose, to make regulations to do so. so uh, the government's position as of today is that it doesn't think it would want to do so. Uh, but this government may change its mind. Uh, future governments, of course, uh, may change their mind too. Um, so I'm not sure there's anything to be gained by removing uh, subsection 2 and subsection 3. Uh, if the government uh, genuinely uh, uh, preaches the same view and doesn't want to, uh, to bring in regulations, then they simply don't have to do so. I don't see the harm in retaining uh, subsection 2 and subsection 3. And again, following up on the, the comments made by Mr Chisholm, it may be unduly harsh in some cases uh, for taxpayers where there isn't uh, this degree of flexibility. So I would, I would urge the uh, Cabinet Secretary not to press um, Amendment 263. 
Jamie. Uh, thank you, uh, convener. I agree with the uh, cabinet secretary that it is obviously important to get the tax and penalties uh, paid when the road. I think that's certainly from the evidence we've taken over the considerable evidence we've taken over stage. I think that's where the committee broadly is as well. Clearly, in these circumstances, the discretion that Revenue Scotland has that it can exercise in these circumstances, it might be important. And that obviously won't be subject to, to ministerial direction. But I wonder if uh, Cabinet Secretary set out what might be the circumstances in which Revenue Scotland might uh, exercise uh, their discretion uh, in these areas. Okay, Cabinet Secretary, to wind up. I think if you know, a, this is reasonably similar territory to the other issues that we discussed earlier on, and I, th I think there is a, a question of, of balance here. Um, section 2101 um, makes the position very clear that where there is a review or appeal under this part, any tax charged or penalty or interest imposed remains due and payable as if there had been no, appeal, no review or appeal. So I think that there is a clarity uh, within um, section 2101 uh, that um, even if um, a taxpayer has requested a review or appeal, the liability to pay tax uh, still crystallises. I, I do think there is a, a need to um, address what are the, the circumstances where that might not apply, uh, given that 2101 is very clear that it applies in all circumstances. And I suppose it comes down to a judgment between whether or not ministers should um, have the power to specify regulations or whether we should um, judge that Revenue Scotland should exercise this view um, on a case-by-case -case basis, whether there should be any general schematic um, view taken or whether it should be left to the individual judgment on a case-by-case -case basis, which Revenue Scotland is able to exercise um, by virtue of its um, general function um, over the collection and management of the devolved taxes. I think in relation to Mr Hepburn's point about in what circumstances would Revenue Scotland exercise ju that judgment, um, I can certainly think of at least two areas. One would be hardship, um, where um, Revenue Scotland could receive material information that could in inform its view on that question. And the other is whether if there's an, an, the emergence of a point of law which is a reasonable point of debate and dispute in legal terms. So I think there are, uh, there are certainly, um, I think there's sufficient scope for Revenue Scotland to take a view that uh, some discretion should be applied on a case-by-case -case basis. I think it, the judgment on this amendment um, uh, and uh, on amendment uh, 289 um, there is a, um, the judgment is whether or not there should be a more general provision whereby regulations we should be able to have that option uh, to provide for postponement. Um, and I, I think this, clearly it's a, it's a matter of judgment as to whether we, you know, that's a relevant power for ministers to have. Um, I'm certainly um, very happy to look at this again in the light of the issues that the committee has raised um, and, and obviously if there's any more points of detail that um, the committee wishes to draw to my attention I'll certainly um, consider that uh, and in the light of those remarks uh, I would not press Amendment 263. Okay, uh, Amendment uh, 263 is not being pressed. Does any other member want to press uh, 263? Uh, no. Okay, the question uh, is that Amendment 263 is not proceeded with. Uh, the question is, is Section 210 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 264 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 58. Cabinet Secretary to move formal. Uh, move, Convener. Uh, the question is that Amendment 264 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Uh, I call Amendment 265 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debated with Amendment 2. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Uh, move, Convener. Uh, the question is that Amendment 265 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 211 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 266 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Already debate with Amendment 2. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. Move, Kabir. 
The question is at moment 266, be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is at section 212, be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 267, the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I uh, already debated with amendment 2. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, move formally. Move, Convener. The question is at amendment 267, be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 268, in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. I already debated with amendment 2. Cabinet Secretary, move formally. Move, Convener. The question is at amendment 268, be agreed to, are we all agreed? Yes. The question is at section 213, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is at sections 214 and 215, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 269 to 272, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite Cabinet Secretary to uh, move those amendments on block. Move, Convener. Does any member object to a single question when you put in those amendments? No. We have no objections. Therefore, the question is that amendments 269 to 272 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 216 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 217 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call amendments 273 to, 273 to 276, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block, Convener. Yeah. Uh, does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. No member has indicated an objection, therefore the question is that amendments 273 to 276 agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Schedule 5 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 277, 278, uh, 310 and 279, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. It moved on block. Yeah. Does any member object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. No member has indicated an objection, therefore the question is that amendments 277, 278, 310 and 279 agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 280 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, group with amendment 291. Uh, I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move amendment 280 and speak to both amendments in the group. Convener, I move amendment 280 and we'll speak to it together with amendment 291. The regulation making power in section 102 is currently subject to affirmative procedure but only where the regulations amend primary legislation. At stage one, the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee recommended that the regulation making power in section 102 should always be subject to affirmative procedure. This was to bring it into line with the other regulation making powers in the bill involving penalties, all of which are already subject to affirmative procedure. I accepted the committee's recommendation and gave an undertaking to bring forward the necessary <coughs> amendments at stage two. <clears throat> and amendments 280 and 291 give effect to that commitment. Yeah, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the question is that amendment 280 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 282, 283, 311, 284, 312, 285, 313, 286, 314 and 287 to 291, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and all previously debated and invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. I, I don't want to move Amendment 289, Convener, yep. so I'm happy to... I don't know if that requires you to read out the long list again, but 289 is in the same uh, bracket as 263, which I opted not to move. Well, uh, do any members have any objections to taking the rest of the amendments on board? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> right, as no member has an objection to uh, those other amendments being uh, put forward on block, the question is that these amendments are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Yes, and does the Cabinet Secretary want to move 289? Uh, not moved, Cabinet you? Secretary, not moved. Okay, that is not moved. Um, no other member wants to move it either, so um, we will move on. Um, and uh, the question is that section 218 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 219 and 220 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendments 292 to, two, to 305, all in the name of the Cabinet Secretary, and all previously debated. I invite the Cabinet Secretary to move these amendments on block. Uh, move, Convener. Does any member object to a single question being put in these amendments? No. We, we have no objections. Therefore, the question is that amendments 292 to 305 are agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. I call amendment 306 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary and a group on its own, Cabinet Secretary, to move and speak to Amendment 306. I move Amendment 306. It makes a minor additional amendment to the Tribunal Scotland Act to ensure that at the appropriate time, the tax tribunals will be able to transfer into the new unified tribunals established by the Tribunal Scotland Act 2014. Thank you. Now, the question is that Amendment 306 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Schedule 4 be agreed to. 
are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Questions in sections 221 to 223, we agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 307 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. Group with Amendment 308. Cabinet Secretary, move Amendment 307 and speak to both amendments in the group. Convener, I move Amendment 307. Amongst the detailed technical provisions of Schedule 4 are amendments to provide that references to the Tax Authority in the Land and Buildings Transaction Tax Scotland Act 2013 and the Landfill Tax Scotland Act 2014 mean Revenue Scotland as constituted by the Revenue Scotland and Tax Powers Bill. These amendments ensure that the necessary change is made the day after Royal Assent. Question is that Amendment 307 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. I call Amendment 308 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary. We debate with Amendment 307. Cabinet Secretary to move formally. It move, Convener. Question is that Amendment 308 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. The question is that Section 224 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 225 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. The question is that the long title be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. And that, colleagues, in stage two consideration of the bill. Uh, I'd like to, to thank everyone for their uh, perseverance uh, during today's proceedings. And members should note that the bill will now be reprinted and amend, and amend, as amended. The Parliament has not yet determined when stage three will take place, but members may now lodge stage three amendments with the legislation team. Members will be informed of the deadline for amendments once it has been determined. I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for his attendance and contributions today and also for his officials coming to the committee. Uh, I'd now like to call a 10 minute recess uh, for the committee.
Good afternoon. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. That's what it is. We've been here so long, it just seems like the afternoon. We're starting about 10 seconds or so, you know. So just, you can gird your loins for that. We'll try to be gentle, won't we, folks? Convene the session. Our next item of business is to take evidence from David Gock, MP, Exchequer Secretary to the Treasury, on the UK Government's report on the implementation of the financial provisions in the Scotland Act 2012 and on the impact on Scotland of the recent UK budget. Uh, Mr Gock is joined by Lindsay White, Deputy Director Devolved on Local Government at HM Treasury. I'd like to welcome you both to the meeting this morning and invite Mr Gock to make a short opening statement. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, convener. It's a great pleasure uh, to be here. Um, there's nothing I particularly want to uh, open with. I'm happy to get to uh, uh, questions uh, as quickly as possible. I'm grateful for the opportunity to appear before this committee uh, and to raise the subject, uh, to discuss the subject matters that you have uh, already mentioned uh, and uh, uh, provide evidence. I hope demonstrating a uh, a constructive, constructive progress in terms of the implementation of the Scotland Act and also to address any particular concerns in respect of the last budget. Well, thank you very much for that. And as normal procedure within the Finance Committee, I will start with some opening questions and then we'll just open out the session to colleagues uh, around the table. Um, so, first of all, I'd, I'd just like to touch on uh, Chapter 6 in terms of borrowing powers, if I may. Um, and basically... Um, in September 2013, uh, the, the committee sought clarification from the Cabinet Secretary to the Treasury regarding whether Scottish Government and Scottish local authorities might be disadvantaged by not having access to the preferential project rate at which English local authorities uh, could borrow uh, from the 1st of November last year in order to take forward major infrastructure projects. Now, the Cabinet Secretary to the Treasury stated that this seemed, uh, and I quote, a perfectly reasonable point and I took to look into it. Uh, but as yet, we've received no clarification on that. I'm just wondering if you are able to provide uh, that clarity for us. Well, what, what I can say, uh, convener, is that in the 2013 um, autumn statement, the government announced that local authorities in Scotland and Wales will have access to the Public Works Loan Board project rate to support priority infrastructure uh, projects. Um, £250 million of project rate borrowing will be available to Scotland uh, from 2014-15 to 15-16, subject to agreement with the Scottish Government on the precise mechanics and conditions, and this will mean access to cheaper borrowing at a discount of between 20 to 40 basis points on the certainty and standard lending rates. OK, well, thank you for that. I'm sure that's very welcome uh, from Scottish local authorities. But is there any reason why the Scottish Government should not be able to access the same uh, rate? Um, I think in, uh, in terms of that, we have um, put in place uh, a number... We've made a number of changes in respect of uh, capital borrowing powers um, and uh, reduced the restrictions... Uh, uh, the, there is greater flexibility for the Scottish Government in terms of that. I don't know whether, Lindsay, there's anything you want to add in terms of the particular point as the Scottish Government here. But. No, just that the Public Work loan, well, basis, loan Board rate is only available to local authorities throughout the, the United Kingdom. It's been designed as a lending rate for local authorities to incentivise right. OK, thank you for that. Uh, now, I'd like to move on to something else, of course, the issue of the block grant adjustment. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary uh, here, uh, John Swinney, basically said, and I quote, uh, we need to agree soon the block grant adjustment mechanism for the devolved taxes, not least to ensure that estimates can be factored into the preparation of the draft Scottish budget this autumn. Um, now, obviously, time has been rolling on over this issue uh, for some months, and indeed, uh, uh, the Cabinet Secretary the Treasury said last September that... Uh, uh, time is marching on. Um, so I'm just wondering what the bottlenecks are in terms of reaching an agreement and how we over you believe we can, we can and should overcome these. But in, in respect of the block grant adjustment for uh, SDLT, as it is uh, in the UK, and for landfill tax, um, the UK government put forward uh, our proposals 
in December of last year. Uh, the Scottish Government responded in April. Uh, we do have differing approaches as to um, how this matter should be addressed. Uh, but also, it would be fair to say, um, we are, both sides are prepared to look at the numbers. Uh, we're looking at the, the, the numbers now. I hope we can work constructively uh, with the Scottish Government. As I say, we, we, we put in place our own proposals uh, last year. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I want to ensure that we have a constructive dialogue with the Scottish Government to see if we can resolve this matter uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you uh, very much for that. Is there any kind of um, time scale or any specific date where you hope to have this matter resolved from your perspective? Not sure that there's a... Uh, I, I want to put a particular deadline uh, on it. I think clearly the sooner this can be resolved, uh, the better. Uh, we are wanting to work through the numbers, and I think the Scottish Government uh, are wanting to work through uh, the numbers so we can resolve this. It, it is a, a, a challenging matter to ensure that we get that one-off adjustment so this matter can be dealt with, addressing not just the situation now, but the situation over future years where there are likely to be changes uh, in terms of the yield that were brought in for the, by these two taxes. Um, so it is a, a complicated matter. But as I say, we, we put forward our proposal some time ago. Um, the Scottish Government responded uh, a couple of months ago, uh, but we're, I hope, working constructively with them so that we can resolve this. Uh, thank you for that. Now, um, staying with the uh, block grant adjustment, the UK Government proposed an adjustment based on uh, uh, the approach taken when business rates were devolved to Scotland, which involved a reduction in the block grant baseline and updating the Barnet comparability factor uh, from 100% to 0%, although these elements would need to be negotiated in respect of the block grant adjustment. But I understand that uh, on the 28th of May, the Cabinet Secretary for the Treasury uh, said, uh, and I quote, there is no political party in the UK that is proposing to make any changes to the Barnet formula. I don't think that's on the cards within the UK. There's no prospect of a change to the Barnet formula. So how does... Um, what is being proposed uh, square with what the Cabinet Secretary said just uh, a couple of weeks ago? Uh, the point I would make here is that the, the Barnett formula uh, remains in place, but it has been the case throughout the history of the Barnett formula uh, that as more items have been devolved, and whether that is uh, taxes or whether that is spending, adjustments have to be made to take into account that further devolution. So what we are talking about here is not a uh, a fundamental uh, rewrite, reform, recalculation of the Barnett formula, far from it. It is a further step, as we have seen on a number of occasions uh, in recent years, where the Barnett formula uh, needs to be updated to reflect the fact that there is uh, further tax devolution. Okay, uh, thank you for that. I'm sure colleagues want to explore some of these issues uh, further. Uh, the first person to ask questions will be Jamie, to be followed by Michael. Thank you, uh, Camille. Indeed, I want to stick with this issue uh, because, Mr. Cook, I want to uh, turn your attention back to uh, your government's command paper, which uh, you style Strengthen Scotland's Future. Emphasize that's your title rather than the uh, one I might accept myself. But uh, in that paper, uh, you set out when the smaller tax are devolved, currently planned to be April 2015, there will be a one-off reduction, which will then be deducted from the block grant for all future years. Uh, the conveners uh, read out the updated position as set out in uh, the uh, latest uh, update on the implementation of that. Why has the UK government changed its position? No, we don't, I don't accept that we have changed our position. Uh, we do want a one-off adjustment. <coughs> Uh, it is important that that adjustment reflects not just the uh, existing uh, yield, if you like, for those, tax those taxes, but also what is likely to happen over the years ahead. And that is why the one-off adjustment uh, should consist of both uh, an adjustment to the block grant and an adjustment to the uh, Barnett Consequentials uh, calculation. Uh, and we believe that that, uh, that change... Uh, is the best way 
uh, we can do to reflect, as I say, both these, th these elements, both the situation as to where we are today and where things are likely to be, given the forecast for changes uh, for stamp duty land tax yield over the years ahead and in, in there being significant increases, uh, and also that landfill tax, albeit that's going in the other direction. You say it will be a one-off adjustment under the mechanism you uh, now propose. Will the figure be the same on a year-on-year -year basis? Well, the, 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 the change in terms of the um, Barnet Consequentials uh, number, uh, we, I mean, we're getting into the details of what would be the discussions that we would have, but as, essentially we're looking for a change to the block grant adjustment, which is a one-off change, and uh, then a, a one-off change in terms of the Barnet consequentials for the years going forward. Yes, but I think, would you not accept that if you said to most people that there will be a one-off adjustment, that would mean that that will be the figure and that will be the figure uh, on a year-on-year -year basis? Well, think I think that's it, what most people would understand a one-off adjustment to be? I, I, think it's Im I think it's important that the adjustment takes into account what is likely to happen over the years ahead. Uh, and indeed, in the, the, the Scottish Government's proposal in this area uh, is looking at uh, uprating in line with inflation. So I don't think it's a, it would be a sensible course to make, a, make a, if you like, a cash reduction to the block grant uh, and then set that, in, um, uh, set that in stone, not taking into account the fact that there are likely to be changes in yield over the years ahead. I don't think that would be a, a fair way uh, of, of doing it, you could be either to the UK or to, to, as a whole, or to Scotland, because either you would set, off, you'd set up a uh, one-off adjustment that, if you like, overshot the current situation to reflect what was likely to happen in the future, or you have something which underestimates and uh, doesn't properly reflect what is likely to happen in future years. Uh, both this Parliament and the Parliament in which you uh, considered uh, the Scotland Act on the basis of the command paper, do you not think that we've been somewhat misinformed by what, you, uh, what was termed a, a one-off adjustment and now we're not so clear that it will be a one-off adjustment? No, I, I, I don't accept that and uh, it has been a well-established uh, principle in terms of devolution of tax powers, uh, that this is done in a way without uh, having an unfair impact either on uh, the nation to which devolution is occurring or uh, the UK as a whole. And, that, and, and uh, what we have sought to do consistently in this area in terms of the block grant adjustment for these two taxes uh, is to ensure that uh, the formula that is used is one that is fair to both Scotland and the UK. You mentioned there the Scottish Government's proposed a mechanism by which the one-off adjustment could be uprated. That sounds to me as though in the process of negotiation they are trying to accommodate uh, your perspective and move towards the UK Government's perspective. How is the UK Government moving towards the Scottish Government's perspective? Well, um, the point I would make, as I said earlier, we set out our proposals uh, in December last year. The Scottish Government set out their proposals uh, in April uh, of this year. Uh, we are in uh, discussion. Both sides have agreed to look at the numbers to explore uh, the particular proposals. We don't believe we've heard anything yet to suggest that uh, there is a a better approach than what we set out in December. But I would stress we're keen to engage constructively, uh, look at the uh, uh, other options that might be available uh, and to explore those in a, in a constructive manner. You said to the convener that uh, this isn't uh, altering uh, the Barnet form, but it strikes me that's precisely what it's doing. You may say it's not in a substantial way. Uh, and again, I refer back to the a command paper uh, which says the UK government recognises some of the concerns expressed about the current system of devolution funding, but this time the priority is to reduce the deficit and any changes must await the stabilisation of the public finances, which I think uh, the UK government said would be 2018 at the earliest, but now we find that actually the mechanism you propose is uh, an alteration to uh, the Barnet formula. So again, why is there this uh, change from the position that was set out to not only this parliament but to 
the UK Parliament and your command paper. Now, again, I don't accept that. This is not a fundamental change of the uh, Barnet formula. What, what this is is uh, an updating of the Barnet, for Barnet formula to take into account further devolution, just in the same way uh, as uh, adjustments were made when business rates were uh, devolved, uh, just in the way I think there have been circumstances where additional spending areas have been devolved, and that has meant uh, there have been changes to the Barnet consequentials. So, uh, certainly, as far as the UK government are concerned, uh, this is not a, um, this is not a, 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 a rewriting of the Barnet formula. The, there is a threat to the Barnet formula, I accept, but that is um, a yes vote in the referendum. Okay, well, we could explore uh, that one, but uh, I mean, were you? I mean, surely the key difference with. Uh, business rates was, you know, here's a command paper before this parliament and the UK parliament considered the matter where you said you wouldn't uh, alter uh, the Barnet formula and now we find that you're seeking to do so where you say it's not a change, you say it's merely being updated. Would you not accept that? could be viewed as semantics by many people. No, I don't. I, I, I think it, it's, if we want to find a way to ensure that the um, the changes to the block grant and the overall um, support to the uh, Scottish Government um, reflects the uh, f yield foregone as a to the UK as a consequence of devolution. We need to find a sensible way of doing that, uh, and it's important that it deals with both issue, both uh, points, which is one, the existing. Um, uh, yield um, and working what, out what that is. That's the relatively simple task, but also taking into account what happens uh, in the future, given that uh, as a consequence of devolution, the future yield of SDLT, which is anticipated, will no longer uh, come to the UK exchequer, that that's forfeited. Uh, and it's important that the, uh, the public finance uh, system reflects that. I turn to the issue of uh, air passenger duty, the command paper, because clearly it was informed by the Calm Commission, which called for the mm -hmm. devolution of air passenger duty, and uh, uh, the uh, UK government decided not to do that, and th that was on the basis that uh, the government was considering the wider, fluctuation, uh, wider future of aviation uh, duty, and it would not be practical to devolve this duty while these considerations are ongoing. I understand that those plans to reform uh, APD are now in place, and indeed your own uh, party through the Commission, chaired by Lord Strathclyde, has called for the devolution of air passenger duty. So when are you going to get on with that? Well, it, it remains the case that there is continued uncertainty as the, the impact of uh, devolving APD would have on the UK as a whole. There's evidence to suggest that um, devolution would result not so much in, uh, in an increase in uh, uh, air passion, air pass in numbers uh, uh, flying, but a switch, if you like, from one part of the UK to another. So we need to have a proper understanding of the impact uh, on the UK uh, as a whole. Uh, there are significant powers in the Scotland Act which we are implementing, and it's right that we focus um, on that. Uh, and you know, until we are more confident as to the uh, impact of devolving APD, um, it, it's not a particular area that we are focused on. Um, but you know, the, this is clearly an ongoing debate. As you have said, uh, Strathclyde Commission has uh, recommended it. So this is not, not, not a matter that has gone away. Um, but in, to, be, you know, to be very frank with you, we also have to, as I say, take into account what the, the impact would be on the UK as a whole. So the Strathclyde Commission is too quick off the mark. Your own party is too quick and off the mark to call for the devolution of, of this particular duty right I now? Think, I think the Strathclyde Commission is a very valuable contribution to the debate, but here and now our focus is on uh, implementing the significant powers that are in the Scotland Act, uh, and, and that's, that's where we're looking. Uh, as far as APD, 
I, I think the position hasn't changed. Uh, we need to have a proper understanding of what the risks would be to, uh, uh, in, in, in terms of a distortion of competition uh, and in terms of uh, revenue risks uh, were we to devolve uh, APD, but it's a matter we continue to keep under review. But as I say, our main focus at the moment is implementing uh, the existing powers within the Scotland Act. I mean, with your refusal to uh, accede to a request from a commission within your own party for the devolution of what might be felt so to be a point of order, convener. This, this agenda item is the implementation of the Scotland Act 2012 mm -hmm. and the UK Budget 2014. I do seek your guidance on how questions from a commission by a political party is strictly relevant to the matter under discussion. Well, the reason I think it's relevant uh, is because in paragraph um, four of the foreword, uh, it says, and I quote, the coalition government made a commitment to people in Scotland to deliver the recommendations of the Calman Commission on a programme for government, and we have delivered. And I think what the member uh, Jamie is doing is uh, querying whether or not that has actually happened, because it's actually in, the, in terms of APD, because it's in the foreword. But uh, I would hope that Jamie will move on from this topic uh, fairly soon. Well, if I could just ask, it was actually going to be the last question. The right, okay. question was going to be, because, uh, <coughs> and I think it is relevant to the Scotland Act 2012, for the, because... <coughs> Uh, of course, it, it state, sets out that it's possible to devolve other taxes to this place in the future. APD might be thought to be a fairly minor and obvious one, and the members, uh, the uh, minister's own parties made that recommendation. It could be done right now, and uh, from what we're hearing, there's a refusal to do that. And I suppose the question it, it, it begets is, you know, how serious is the prospect of the further devolution of any substantial taxation powers in the future, whether they've been recommended by the Strathclyde Commission or not? Well, I think the other, I think, in addition to the points I've, I've already made, is that um, uh, we've been clear that uh, post-referendum, these matters uh, are one that um, we will look at again. Um, but as I say, at this, at this point in time, uh, our focus is on implementing the, the, the powers that are in the Scotland Act. That's all okay. good, you know. Michael. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vida. Uh, Mr. Cog, the Scottish Government is about to set up its own independent uh, commission to look at um, forecasts for the, the taxes that have been devolved, the, the three that have been devolved. That's going to run in conjunction with the OBR, which is going to continue uh, to produce um, forecasts twice a year in relation to land building transaction tax. Um, and the landfill tax. It's also going to give forecasts for the aggregate levy, um, although that's not being devolved. And during our discussions around the, the, the forecasting issue and also in discussions with the OBR directly, um, there have been a number of um, you know, requests for the, the OBR to consider producing forecasts across all of its uh, areas of responsibility to help advise this, the Scottish Government uh, in terms of the, the strength of the economy or, or what have you. Do you have a view as to whether the OPR uh, could play a role in, in producing that type of information or are there reasons why you would think that would be a pro uh, problematic? I think, to be honest, the, uh, as far as what the OBR could do for the Scottish Government, um, that's principally an issue for the Scottish Government uh, and you know, to some extent the OBR, assuming that they've got the capacity and so on to uh, do what is requested of them. Um, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it, it's, it's a matter for the Scottish Government as to what extent they wish to make use of the OBR or whether they wish to have a, a, an independent uh, body um, in terms of the the, the, the more purely Scottish aspects of them. We think the OBR is doing a very good job. I think that it's very much, um, uh, I think, internationally seen as a very respected organisation. Uh, and the model that we have followed in the UK is one that a lot of countries are looking at very closely uh, in terms of uh, having a, an, an independent forecaster and... Uh, uh, a body there that is separate from government, giving greater credibility 
uh, to the numbers. So we're very pleased with how the OBR has uh, operated. Um, I think in terms of you know, what, what, what services it might provide to a Scottish government, uh, you know, I think I'd be interested to see what the Scottish government had to, had to say first. Yeah. I'm just wondering in relation to this, because in other areas, uh, for example, the Welfare Reform Act, uh, there's been a number of changes um, to how the, the devolved settlement has been affected by that. Um, council tax reduction, um, changes to, to other aspects of uh, funding and support from, from the UK government, which are now solely the responsibility of the Scottish government. So we get information about the changes at a national level, but we don't get them at a Scottish level. Uh, and I'm just wondering if we could, you know, get the OBR to, to provide a service, which we're not going to get under the, the 2012 uh, Act, uh, because we're going to get both in the, the Scotland's own independent Fiscal Commission looking at the taxes that are devolved, but we're going to continue getting the OBR giving us figures uh, on those same devolved taxes. But in other areas where there have been uh, powers devolved, we're not going to get any comment from the OBR in terms of their, their financial impact on Scotland, and nor are we going to get them from the Independent Fiscal Commission. So I would, do you not think it would be helpful if the OBR could provide information in exactly the same way. If it's good enough for the 2012 Act, would it not also be good for the Welfare Reform Act? I, I, I'm, I, I fully take on board the point that you're making. I, I'm slightly nervous about, um, uh, if you like, jumping in without hearing what the OBR would have to say as to the practicalities of some of that, to what extent um, some of the forecasts that the OBR currently perform could be broken down into the nations and regions of, of, of the UK in a, in a way that is sufficiently robust and reliable um, is, a, is, if you like, a technical question for, which is better raised with the OBR than it is uh, with me. Um, you know, I, I take on board the argument that you're, that you're making, um, but I think there are various questions that one would need to ascertain, I think, with the OBR as to uh, what the strength of the challenge would be for them to, 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 to do that. Yeah. I mean, we have set up a, a committee in this parliament to look at these very mm -hmm. issues because of the, the, the impact of them. I, I happen to convene uh, that committee. Um, I would love to get an opportunity to discuss in the same way I'm discussing with you those changes with Ian Duncan Smith or Esther McVeigh. So possibly the next time you're speaking to them, could you tell them that we'd quite happily have that discussion about how they could help and get the OBR to inform us? Because at the moment they won't talk to us and won't give us that information. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to take that away. I think, as I say, there are various... Uh, I mean, if we're getting into matters for DWP rather than uh, areas on tax, then that's for them. DWP that, ministers, I can assure you. That's, 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 that's ones for them, and uh, it's not for me to, to speak on their behalf on that. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Deputy Convener. Uh, thanks, uh, Convener. I mean... Just maybe to continue, some of the issues we've touched on before. I mean, landfill tax, um, I mean, our hope, and I assume it's the case in the UK as well, that the hope is that the income from that tax will decrease the receipts because we're hoping less will go to landfill. I mean, if we were hugely successful and, and managed to have no landfill after, say, a year or two years, that means there would be no revenue coming from that source. I mean, that, that would be the kind of extreme case. I'm, I'm not suggesting that's going to happen. Um, but that would mean quite a dent in our budget going forward. So, I mean, is that being taken into account when we're looking at these forecasts? Oh, yeah, very, very much so. And, and, and I mean, we've, we've got two taxes here, um, which appear to be moving in opposite directions. I mean, you're absolutely right. We do anticipate that landfill tax receipts will fall in the years ahead. Uh, and if one took... If, if one took that in isolation, it wouldn't be fair on, on, on Scotland were we just to have a one-off uh, block grant adjustment on the basis of current receipts uh, when the receipts in question is likely to, to, to fall away. But we must also um, uh, put into the equation, if you like, what is likely to happen with stamp duty land tax, where the projections are that the yield on SDLT in the UK will increase over the years ahead. 
Uh, it's worth pointing out that SDLT is a is a bigger tax in terms of uh, Scottish yield. I think landfill tax is very roughly around about £100 million a year. SDLT is £500 million a year. Uh, so we have to take into account the trends in, with, with both taxes, and they're going in different directions. And are, are, are frankly very hard to, to forecast. I mean, we've been spending a bit of time meeting the OBR and looking at the new fiscal commission. And I mean, if there's one message comes out of all of that is everybody accepts it's very, very difficult to forecast any of these things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, there's never going to be agreement between the Scottish and the UK government exactly, is there, as to exactly what the forecast for these would be? I think you're... Um, one, it's, it's, it's fair to say that SDLT is a volatile tax. It clearly, uh, clearly has been. Um, two, I think it's fair to say that uh, these are difficult areas. But I think the third point I would make is, however difficult it might be, it is only right and proper that we uh, do everything we can to reach agreement uh, in this area, because what we need to do to be fair to both the UK and Scotland is to make an adjustment um, now so we know where we stand that attempts to address what is happening with current receipts and what is likely to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we simply froze it where we were, where we are at the moment, uh, then, uh, I mean, moving in different directions, but on the one hand, landfill tax it, we would likely to have a, an adjustment that was too great um, and uh, for, for the future and in terms of uh, stamp duty land tax we'd have an adjustment that rather underestimated what the yield is likely to be in the future. I mean I think we're in agreement as to what the issues are. I suppose my, my question is you know the time scale and you were asked about the time scale earlier and I don't think it didn't come across that you felt it was very urgent. But, I mean, from this committee's point of view, one of our major remits is, is watching the budget. And we are, you know, gradually approaching the budget for 2015-16, eh, which we start after the summer. And, and this is part of it. So, I mean, it certainly concerns me that eh, if this is just kind of drifting on, because, I mean, de December was your proposal. Well, that's, what, seven months ago. Um, you've had a counter-proposal, but from what you, you said... Um, it, there's been no, nothing better has come forward since December, which suggests to me we're not making much progress. Well, I think uh, I certainly didn't want to uh, suggest that there was uh, a lack of urgency in this matter. We set out our proposal in December. It was some four months later uh, when the Scottish Government responded uh, to that. We are keen to reach agreement on this matter. And, I mean, have, has the UK government moved its position at all since December, or has it just basically said the Scottish proposal's not very good, so it, nothing's happening? Well, we, we, we still believe that the proposal that we set out in December is... Uh, we haven't seen anything that is better than that, but, you know, I would stress that we are keen to engage constructively. Uh, we are working through the numbers, and I think that's a very helpful process. Um, you know, I, I hope that we can reach agreement. We are keen to do so. Uh, it is important for both sides to engage in that process. So I, you know, I entirely agree with the point that you're making there. I'm, I'm just uneasy about this, it, the, the phrase you've used, nothing better than what came forward in December, because I mean, I'm not asking for all the details, but I, mean, I assume when you, your proposal had maybe 10 points to it, and you know, there's an assumption about inflation and there's an assumption about different things. So, I mean, it's not a question about a whole new package coming along that's better, but it's presumably it's about saying, well, you think inflation is going to be 2%, we think it's 4%, let's settle on 3%. I mean, is that the kind of area we're in? Well, perhaps if I can uh, attempt to describe um, very briefly what our proposal is, um, in, in very, very broad terms, uh, there is a uh, one-off adjustment in terms of the block grant, and then there is also, at the same time, we make an adjustment for the Barnet consequentials. Uh, now, that th those are the, that, that, that's the framework, if you like, um, that, that we have proposed. The Scottish Government have proposed, um, uh, four months after our proposal, they came back with a proposal which was along the lines of um, 
uh, an adjustment to the uh, block grant and then uh, an uprating in line with inflation. Uh, we believe our proposal uh, better reflects what I think we should all be trying to get to, which is something which reflects the, the, the current and the future position of uh, yield from those taxes. Um, but you know, we are more than willing to engage constructively uh, with the Scottish Government. I hope, believe that the Scottish Government uh, are willing to engage with us. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, um, and uh, that we can, we can reach agreement in this area. I mean, I continue to, to, to use a phrase like willing to engage is all very well, but I mean, we're now in June. It, willing to, and I've expected a little bit more than willing to engage, like actually, are, are, are the two sides engaging? I mean, is, are, is anybody yeah. looking for a halfway house? Well, uh, you know, I think that um, we're, wor we're working through the numbers together. Um, we're trying to uh, reach agreement uh, on this. Uh, as I say, it was some time ago that we set forward uh, our proposals. Um, you know, I, th I think this is... You know, we want to reach uh, agreement on this. We are you know, not being in any way um, you know, unreasonable. We're not ruling out options. Uh, we're trying to explore these things in a way and you know, in the hope that um, reasonable people can reach agreement in this area. And I mean, the ultimate scenario is that there isn't agreement and yet a decision will have to be made at some stage because you've got your budget and we've got our budget. I mean, for us, it's probably slightly more important, but, but in that it's a bigger chunk of our budget than it is of your budget that's being devolved. Um, and, and frankly, you know, you do have the power to impose it ultimately and just set a figure. At, at what stage would the UK government just impose a solution? Well, I, think, I think what I would say to that is the UK government is wanting to reach agreement on this. We're, you know, we're not, um, we're not trying to um, you know, say we, you know, absolutely it must be done this way, or we will impose it upon you. We are uh, engaging. Uh, we are working with the Scottish government, um, and you know, we are listening to what they have to say in response to our proposals. Uh, we're trying to explore in the detail. This is, as you have uh, said yourself, this is a complex matter. Um, but I believe that we are uh, you know, acting in a perfectly uh, reasonable way with a genuine desire to reach agreement in this matter. I certainly hope so. The final area I want to touch on is uh, Chapter 7 of your report, uh, which talks about um, devolving existing taxes and creating new devolved taxes. Now, from what I understood... Uh, you said that the, the focus at the moment is delivering the Scotland Act 2012, uh, which I, I certainly agree with, and the points made it in uh, paragraph 48 that neither the Scottish Government nor the UK Government has put forward proposals to create new devolved taxes. Um, I mean, the Scotland 2012, uh, especially for Scottish rate of income tax, I mean, we are talking quite a long time scale because it, before it's fully devolved. I mean, I think we're probably looking at 2018, 19, or beyond before it is really totally hived off. So, I mean, I mean, would that be the kind of time scale you're thinking about that we wouldn't really look at any further existing taxes until the Scotland Act issues had been fully implemented? Well, I, I think um, you know, what I'd do is, is, is say is that as the uh, as the Prime Minister has made clear, um, first of all, we need to uh, know what Scotland's constitutional future is, and obviously we will um, know that later on this year. Um, uh, as I say, the focus as of today is very much on the uh, Scotland Act and the focus of the committee. Um, but clearly, post-referendum, uh, assuming a, a, a no vote, there will be considerable um, uh, thought and interest in terms of uh, what further powers uh, the Scottish Government should have. Uh, that debate, I think, will be a, um, a, a very interesting one. Um, but at this point in time, um, the focus is on what we've already got within the Scotland Act. 
So you wouldn't even be willing to commit to that we would be, be looking at other uh, powers or taxes um, before 2018-19 if there was a no vote? Uh, what I'm saying is that we, um, beyond what is already set out, this is, I think, a matter for the, the debate post the referendum, uh, not pre the referendum. Okay, thank you for that. Gavin, to be followed by Malcolm. Thanks, Convener. Um, obviously, you've had quite a number of questions about the block grant adjustment mechanism, but I, I make no apology for returning to you because I think it is the, the most important by far. And I, I do share John Mason's uh, concern about, about timescales so far. Um, clearly, the, the Scottish Government has to produce a draft budget uh, at the beginning of October, and, and work begins for that, obviously, in the months leading up to that. Without an agreement on the draft, uh, on the block grant adjustment mechanism, that, I think that would be a pretty difficult exercise. Um, what, what plans are there at the moment for meeting an engagement at ministerial level to try and accelerate uh, the progress of this? Um, well, what I would say at the moment is there's a lot of work um, underway at official level, uh, as and when it's necessary to progress this further. Um, I'm sure that we would uh, meet at a ministerial level as well. We have met in the past in terms of um, uh, joint committees and discussed this matter. Uh, so uh, certainly uh, from a UK perspective, we're keen to progress this matter. Um, it's also worth pointing out that we've already asked the OBR to start forecasting now. Um, uh, in respect of uh, these taxes so that they can refine their methodology um, uh, before the system is implemented in April 15. Um, but uh, of course you know, we do need to uh, reach a conclusion as to how the adjustments will be calculated and you know, we want to uh, we want to do we want to do that um, as soon as we can. Okay. Who, who, I mean, who, is, who is leading ultimately the discussions from the UK government side of things? Would that be you or, or is it one of your colleagues? That would be me. That would be you. Okay. Are, are, is there a meeting scheduled with Scottish Government ministers at the moment in order to try and progress this? Uh, not at the moment, but I think there's constructive uh, dialogue at the moment between officials uh, and uh, you know, we hope that we can make as much progress on that. But, but you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, as and when we need to have a meeting, we'll have a meeting. Um, Lindsay, I don't know whether there's anything you want to say in terms of um, where officials are in terms of these the conversations on the block grant calculation. I think it's very much as you've set out official level. We've, um, we've had the Scottish Government's proposal and we are talking to them to understand the mechanics of it and we're now at the stage of working through the detailed numbers compared, to be able to compare the, the two proposals and look to assess them in terms of a sort of fair and equal treatment for both um, Scotland and for the UK. But we're still working through the, the detailed numbers. No, no, I appreciate you, you weren't uh, quite right, willing to commit to, to a deadline for resolving that issue, but, but effectively there is a deadline there um, in that the draft budget comes in October. Work will be, have to be done in the run-up to that. Uh, clearly, you can't be held to this, but I mean, is, in your view, is it likely that this issue will be resolved um, in June, in July, in August? I mean, is, is there a... I, I can see why you asked that question. Um, I, I think I'm, I remain reluctant to put a particular uh, date on it. I think clearly uh, all round it would be beneficial that we could reach agreements uh, sooner rather than later. Um, you know, obviously, it, it is some time since we set out our proposal detailed proposal in December um, and I hope we can we, we can progress that sooner rather than later. Obviously there are two parties to this but you know, I, I believe that we can engage constructively um, both sides can engage constructively it's in our, it, both our interests to resolve any uncertainty. Okay, I mean I won't, I won't press further on that point other than say I hope you can sort of take from the number of questions on the issue from the committee just the, the strength of, or the depth of importance of it. Um, next question, then. in terms of the, the block, grant adjust, block grant adjustment, are you um, 
discussing each of the two taxes separately, or is there going to be a, a blended uh, block grant adjustment, as it were? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think what I'd say to that is, is that there's a certain degree of flexibility on that. I mean, I think we, what we want is the best result. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the two taxes rather go in different directions. One is likely yeah. to increase in yield, the other is likely to fall. Um, what we want to do is something that reflects the totality, but whether that's, you know, whether, whether that's an answer that involves looking at the two separately and then bringing it together, or whether it's some, to use your word, blended, um, I, I think we're prepared to be flexible on that. Okay. Um, if I can move on to the Scottish rate of income tax, um, your paper suggests that the, there will be a transitional period. I mean, everyone knows that. It says those quite specifically a transitional period of two years or three years, and I just wonder if there's any um, final decision on that as to whether it will be two years or will it be three years, or, or is it a case of we... At this stage, we don't know. We're going to see how things develop. Yeah, uh, the latter. We, 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 no final de decision has been made. Um, you know, I think we, we, we want to see how things are working. Um, uh, and you know, as far as we're concerned, we want to see this delivered smoothly and successfully. Uh, so I think we'll, 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 we'll take a view later on the process as to whether um, how long a transitional period is necessary. Okay. And how, how is work progressing in terms of identifying um, quite clearly who are Scottish taxpayers? I, 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 my understanding is that that's um, going very well. I think we've got a, a clear definition. Um, we've uh, just made a minor uh, change, very minor change to the definition uh, via the Wales Bill, uh, just to pick up a, a, a very small technical point. Um, but uh, that, I think, as, as, as I understand it, uh, seems to be um, pretty successful and uh, no, no new difficulties are emerging. Okay. And finally, um, the, the original cost estimate for uh, creating the Scottish rate of income tax was £40 to £45 million. Pounds. The most de recent estimate I've seen um, is a reduction of that from £35 million to £40 million. Pounds. I just wonder, is that 35 to 40 million pounds the most up-to-date estimate as far as, you, as far as you're concerned, or has that figure changed? In yeah, the, no, in that, the that's the most up-to-date number that I have as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Malcolm, to follow by Jean. I'm afraid I'm going to be talking about the block grant adjustment as well, but I, you can see that we're, I mean, it's, it's understandable for two reasons. I think one, because it's relevant to the immediate budget that we face, but also because it's the critical factor around the fiscal devolution that we're going to get and indeed the enhanced devolution that some of us, actually a minority around the table, I think, uh, want rather than independence. So it's absolutely pivotal for that. So I suppose from my point of view, I would support more fiscal devolution because it gives you more uh, flexibility, obviously, around the rates, but also a, a central idea is that you should gain uh, more of the fruits of economic growth and so on. And I presume that's the thinking behind the block grant adjustment for the, the strit. I, I mean, I wonder, is that block grant adjustment, which will be by far the most important one, are all the details of that now resolved? There was some discussion about whether you know, differences in population size would be taken into account or not, but I, I don't know whether, that's, uh, whether that was just something that I think the, the, the Cabinet Secretary, I think I take that to be John Swinney, respond, uh, said in being asked by us that he had asked officials to give further consideration to that question. I wonder if that's still an issue or, from a Treasury point of view, is, is population size just related to economic growth more generally? Now, I mean, I, I, the first point to make is, is I entirely agree with your point about um, you know, the purpose of the Scottish Rate of Income Tax, about improving accountability, uh, about there being a, uh, a, a, a greater uh, link, if you like, between economic performance within Scotland and tax base and so on. Uh, so I think that is a very important point. Uh, the UK and Scottish governments uh, have agreed to the mechanism in terms of the Scottish rate of income tax uh, and the way in which the block grant will be adjusted uh, in relation to that. Um, 
it's consistent with the principles that have been agreed by both governments. So in, in terms of this process, uh, I, don't, I, I don't see there in being any particular difficulties or unresolved matters. Uh, Lindsay. Just specifically on the population point, once we're through the transition period, we've agreed between both governments that uh, the adjustment will be indexed to the UK's uh, non-saving and non-dividend tax base, and that will have that tax base will, of course, vary according to a range of factors, and one of which will be population, so it will be factored through that part of the process. Okay, thanks. And now reverting to the, um, the main question of the day, which is the immediate block rank adjustment. Uh, as far as I could see in your latest statement, the difference was between an additional adjustment for Barnett consequentials and an additional adjustment for inflation. Now, you may already have explained this, and I missed it, but, but could, you, could you say a bit more about what an adjustment for Barnett consequentials would actually mean in concrete terms? Um, what, it would, what it would mean is that the, um, the, the uh, Barnett consequentials would be uh, reduced, reduced by a small amount, given that these are relatively small taxes. Um, uh, the amount of which you know, to be determined, um, but uh, in order to reflect the future yield of these taxes. But would that be an adjustment that varied from year to year? Would that still be a, a one-off? It, it would be one-off in terms of it would be agreed here and now. Uh, and that would, you know, that, that would be put in place for the future. So it wouldn't be a matter that we would revisit in future years. But again, the, the precise details of the mechanism, you know, are, are, you know, are we saying it's a say, you know, identical percentage for each and every year in future, or whether that is a percentage that will be agreed here, here and now, but might reflect changes in, in you know, the projections and changes in yield is, is we're getting very much into the into the details here. But the point is, it's one off in terms of we agree it now, um, uh, and, and it's in place. And so that there will be the certainty for the Scottish government and the Scottish Parliament in terms of uh, the impact on Barnet consequentials for future years. So. so does that mean uh, that the, there will be the, blo the block, one-off block grant adjustment and then there will be an addition which, from the Scottish point of view, would just be indexation for inflation and from your point of view, presumably means a bit more than that? Well, I don't know whether, uh, you know, I'm not putting numbers on it, but, but, a, but a change in terms of the Barnet consequentials reflecting future, what we anticipate will be the future changes in yield for these taxes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jean. <clears throat> Thank you. I just wanted to refer back to the OBR and the uh, projected figures. In the, I think the earliest figures that we had from the OBR on landfill tax were quite dramatically uh, wrong and then reviewed. Um, as I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, as the recognition of, of the policy uh, political policy in Scotland was changed and, and what that might mean. Uh, equally, I suspect there was a bit of a learning curve on the, on the what we now call land and building transfer tax, uh, given the difference in, in house prices and commercial properties and so on in Scotland. Um, what other learning curves are there for you? I mean, it, as, as you try to estimate the economy in Scotland in different areas, are, is, is, the, uh, is there a kind of realisation that there are quite considerable differences in other areas as well? I think um, the first point I should make is just to be very clear in terms of the calculation of the, of the adjustment for the block grant. Um, it's not um, uh, necessary to calculate what will be um, raised from the, the, the Scottish equivalent tax. The point is to work out what the SDLT yield would be because the, 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 the relevant number is what is forfeited from the UK exchequer. 
and that is then the, the number that results in the block grant adjustment, not what is going to be raised from the Scottish tax. So I just want to be very clear, uh, because that is an important distinction. Uh, in, in terms of the uh, OBR, uh, in well, in terms of any uh, forecast for yield, um, you know, these things are notoriously uh, difficult. I think what I would say about the OBR is that its uh, reputation, uh, its credibility is very strong. Uh, I was, for example, talking to a Canadian economist who's been looking at uh, the OBR's performance, and he was very impressed by it. Um, that's not to say that everything is you know, bang on, but, for example, there's no obvious sign of, 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 of getting things wrong in one direction consistently as opposed to another direction. Um, they, uh, they're, I think, widely respected and seen to be uh, independent, uh, as, as indeed they are. Uh, so I think that's, that's, that's all uh, very important. But, of course, you know, forecasts are notoriously difficult and there's always more to learn and uh, refine and improve and circumstances are always changing which make these, makes these things difficult. Thank you. And the, uh, the, the Scotland Act and, and the common recommendations r with reference to air passenger duty, um, would there have been the same uh, prediction or, or calculation done to evidence your statement that there would be disadvantage elsewhere in the United Kingdom? Well, this is work that was uh, undertaken um, internally within the, the Treasury and uh, an HMRC and a concern that, uh, that what you see is, um, uh, if, if, if you like, uh, transfer of business if you devolve APD and you have a markedly different rate in, in one nation of the United Kingdom as compared to another is that you see a transfer from one airport in the United Kingdom to another airport in the United Kingdom uh, resulting in an overall reduction in yields uh, and uh, if you like a, a distortion uh, created there which which is which is a concern that you know, as the UK government we have to take into account and that's why we've been cautious about uh, devolving APD. And with that evidence, it, has there been recognition of the very different kind of uh, flight or services, uh, airport services in Scotland as compared to the rest of, of England, Wales and Northern Ireland? Uh, yes. Um, and, you know, it's worth bearing in mind you know, that um, there are already... Um, changes, say, flights, for example, from uh, the islands uh, don't have APD charged. Yeah, that's, a, that's a measure that's, uh, that is in place to reflect the fact that there are different characteristics there. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, one, you know, if one looks at uh, what is likely to be a distortion, say, between uh, Newcastle and Edinburgh or elsewhere in the United Kingdom, between Bristol and Cardiff, you know, those are factors that a UK government has to take into account. And just finally, you did recognise the difference between Belfast and Dublin airports and, and make allowances there. Was that a consideration when you were considering Newcastle and Edinburgh, for example? Well, the particular circumstances, and of course you know, Dublin is not part of the United Kingdom, um, but there were particular circumstances in respect of uh, Northern Ireland that shares a land border with another country, um, and uh, that other country uh, has a, a different regime. And we were seeing, uh, as a consequence of that, uh, Northern Ireland face particular difficulties. Uh, so we sought to address it, but that was based on the particular circumstances that applied in Northern Ireland. And just finally then, given the the evidence and the, these uh, decisions that you've arrived at, that that would be a permanent feature, that would not, air passenger duty would not be uh, a devolved tax in, in, to your mind it would, the evidence against it is, is so strong that it won't be considered in the future? 
Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying, but I, what I am saying is that there are these challenges and these difficulties. Um, there's clearly an ongoing debate about APD, uh, and you know, it, is, it, is, it is one that may well be revisited in the future. Uh, the point I'm wanting to get across is, is a degree of caution because of these difficulties. Uh, and also, as I said earlier, what our focus is, is trying to implement the, the, the Scotland Act. Uh, which is an important and significant matter and, and uh, one that shouldn't be uh, underestimated and clearly one that this committee takes very seriously. Mm. Oh. Would there be any OBR uh, reflections on the, on the tax on the income raised that would be available? Uh, I, I don't know whether the OBR has uh, done any uh, work on that. If, if I may, I'll, 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 I'll look into see what information is, is available and, uh, uh, and, and, and provide that to you, if I may. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That's concluded the questions from uh, colleagues around the table, but I have a few more I just want to ask just to uh, finish up the session. I'll just end on, um, um, well, sorry, I'll just start on what uh, Jean has been talking about and others, uh, the, the passenger duty. I think the issue is, though, that the market's already distorted because, I mean, when I was younger, I remember being able to fly from Glasgow directly to Porto, eh, Banjul in the Gambia, Kefalonia, all sorts of places, you know, in my wild youth. None of these places you can fly to now from Glasgow because of APD has, has, has focused more flights in places like Manchester and London, which means that, you know, there's not so many jobs in our airports because there's not so much need for tax drivers, engineers, baggage handlers, caterers, whatever. And so there's already a distortion and because people are having to travel a couple of hundred miles down to Manchester or go via London uh, with an, oh, environmental and other issues. So surely that on that issue, that, and given that it was already, um, you know, promises having been delivered actually on the foreword to this report, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't understand why there is such a reluctance, particularly as your own party north of the border believes it's a good idea. I think the point I would make on APD uh, more generally is that it does raise a considerable amount of revenue uh, for the Exchequer uh, and at a time when we are um, bringing down the deficit very significantly but there continues to be a large deficit we have to be careful as to what we do with the public finances. It is also worth pointing out that at the budget uh, we made changes to APD so that uh, uh, the uh, more uh, expensive band, as it were, was, 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 was removed and rolled into a less expensive band. So we've taken steps to um, uh, reduce uh, APD in a number of circumstances. Uh, that had a fiscal cost. Um, that, was a, that was a tax cut and you know, money that um, uh, we have foregone and can't be used in other areas. So we are... Um, yeah, we are restricted by, by the state of the public finances. It's also worth pointing out that um, no VAT is charged on, uh, uh, on air flights. Um, so APD is, is, is perhaps performing a role there that uh, other taxes do in some other circumstances. Um, but yeah, a a APD uh, applies consistently across um, Great Britain. Uh, and brings in a, a great deal of revenue. And I think being sensible about the public finances means that we face some difficult choices. OK, thank you. And in paragraph 66, I'll just touch on a subject which has been raised before. You say that uh, you talk about making all bandit consequential slightly smaller. There are a number of questions which you've answered on that. You've talked about, when asked by uh, uh, Malcolm, you know, effectively what we're talking about in terms of uh, the amount of money. Uh, you said that's to be determined um, and you don't really want to put numbers on it. Now, I can understand that from your perspective. From my perspective, it's quite frustrating. I mean, if you get any kind of ballpark figure that we're talking about, you know, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of pounds, we're talking about millions of pounds, tens of millions of pounds. I mean, you must have a rough estimation as to where that possibly sits. Well, I think what I'd, what I'd say is, look, we're keen to resolve this. Um, yeah, I think we can, uh, I've, I've quoted to you what the, in, in rough terms, the, the sums are in respect of what SDLT and uh, landfill tax is the, if you like, the revenue that, would be forfeited uh, as a consequence of uh, devolution. 
Um, but you know, there are differing trends, and it's important that the formula we come up with reflects that. Uh, I think that, you know, as, you, as you say, you can see why I don't want to put a, a number on it, uh, and I can also see why I don't want to put a number on it. Um, much though I appreciate your, your position uh, and that you'd like to put some parameters on it, but what I, I think the, the, the most helpful uh, point, the most hope, helpful approach is that we continue to engage constructively with the Scottish Government, and I hope the Scottish Government can continue to engage constructively with us uh, in a way that we can reach agreement on this matter. You're not the first minister, not even for the first parliament, who's actually given us an answer along those lines. But uh, it is frustrating when we can't not put, get numbers on it. But I understand uh, you, you don't wish to, to dis, you know, to uh, to go further um, on that at the moment. Now, again, you were asked about in the event of no agreement between government has reached um, about the final decision. I mean. We, I think we really do need to have some kind of idea as to when the final decision will be taken. I already quoted Danny Alexander as saying time is marching on, and that was September of last year. I think all colleagues around the table would be keen to know when that final decision would be made and who would take that decision. Well, If no agreement was reached, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think what I would say is, is, is as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, um, the focus is about reaching an agreement. Um, and so I don't want to put a particular uh, deadline on this and you know, convey a sense of, you know, if, if you don't agree with us by such and such a date, then you know, we're going to do our own thing. I don't think that's a, the appropriate approach uh, to this. What I want to do is work constructively with the Scottish Government so that we can, we can reach agreement. The sooner we can do that, the better. And I, I, and I think... Um, I think the committee would agree with that. Yes, I mean, I mean, I think everyone wants a, 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 a constructive negotiations, and you've emphasised that a number of times. And you've also said, and I quote, you, you do not seek to impose. But at the same time, there must be a deadline, surely, when it will impact, as, as, as Gavin pointed out, on the Scottish budget deliberations. So surely there must be a deadline in mind whereby you cannot really go beyond that and that negotiations must be concluded. Well, as I say, I, I, I think um, in the spirit of uh, a continuing constructive dialogue, um, I think uh, setting deadlines would be counterproductive at this point. Um, as far as I'm concerned, what we want to do is, is reach an agreement. Okay, in terms of that agreement, actually, um, you know, you, you were also asked by colleagues around the table um, about possible face-to-face -face ministerial engagement. You said, and I quote, as and when it is necessary to meet at ministerial level, you will meet. But, I mean, you're here in Scotland at the moment, you know, I mean, the Cabinet Secretary, with whom I would imagine you would have these discussions, was here half an hour before you were. I mean, surely, you know, it would have been sensible to arrange to discuss these matters, you know, while you were actually here. Well, the, um, at this precise point, there is, as we've heard, uh, constructive engagement between officials. There is uh, a lot of detailed work going on in working through the numbers. I think it's important that officials are able to continue that work, work through the numbers, work through the details, work through the implications of the two proposals, if, if you like, that are on the table at the moment. Uh, and once that work has been um, completed, and to the extent there are still any outstanding uh, areas for agreement, then that is the point at which I think a face-to-face -face meeting would be most beneficial. So, um, you know, I'm grateful for your suggestion uh, that I meet Mr. Swinney uh, today, uh, and I'd be more than happy to uh, meet him. But I think uh, uh, a, a uh, just at this point, um, I'm not sure is, the, is, is necessarily the best time to do that, but uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to meet Mr Swinney to discuss this further uh, as, and, as and when it would be appropriate for, for concluding this matter. Okay, thank you. I've just got one final question, which is, um, you know, how will any decision which is actually taken be communicated to this committee and indeed the, the Scottish Parliament? Um, uh, I... I, I I'm not quite sure exactly uh, how we would do that, but we obviously work with, um, assuming that agreement has been reached, we would work with the Scottish Government to ensure that this committee was uh, fully informed of uh, uh, 
the agreement and the details of the agreement. Okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for answering our, our, our questions, actually. We really appreciate you actually coming to uh, the Scottish Parliament, in particular the Finance Committee. Um, I'd also like to thank colleagues for their uh, uh, questions. Um, and uh, at the start of the meeting, we agreed to take the next two items in private. So, I therefore, would like to close this public part of the meeting and I'll suspend the committee for five minutes in order for colleagues to have a natural break until uh, the public and witnesses and official report to leave.